I'm going to write it down here. So average. How do we apply the word average in mathematics? Well, maybe a better question would be, how do we apply average when, we're, when I'm doing grades? What do I, how do I figure out your test average? Let's say you do, you take two tests. You had a test last week, and you got a test next week. How do I figure out your average of those two tests? Who can help me? Going to do what? We are going to divide. What other operation are we going to do? Add. Yeah, we're going to add. So we're going to add the two tests together. And then we're going to divide by how many tests we added together. Right? So if we have two tests. We're going to add those scores together. And we're going to divide by two. OK? Let's say that Rodney. He aced that test last week. He got a hundred. He got a hundo. But then next week's test, he got a fifty. He forgot his notes in the bathroom, and his sister was in the bathroom doing her hair or doing something, and he couldn't get to the notes. And it was a time test, so he took the test without his notes and got a fifty. So he got a hundred on the first one. A 50 on the second one, what is Rodney's average test score? 75. So you take 100, you add 50, and then you divide by how many scores you added together by 2, and you get 75. All right, why am I talking about average? Well, figuring out midpoint in today's lesson is exactly like average. We take the two endpoints, we add them together, and we divide by two. So you guys have done this. You guys know this. So let's do this first problem. My endpoints are segment AE, so my endpoint is A, my other one is E. My formula is that I add the two together, negative 12 plus 10, and I divide by two. This is in your packet. It should be like the fourth page. 1.3, using midpoint formulas. This is the practice from today. So what's negative 12 plus 10? That's a negative 2. And when we divide negative 2 by 2, what do you get? Well, that's going to be a negative 1. It's going to be a negative 1. So negative 1 right there. That's our midpoint. I'm going to call that point M. How do we know that that's in the middle of point A and point E? I mean, that's our segment. How do I know that's in the middle? Well, I can pretend I'm walking on top of that number line. And I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So over here, it's 11. On this side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 11. So it's right in the middle. So this works. You guys see that this formula works. We plug in the two endpoints. We divide by 2. And we get the midpoint between those two endpoints. Go to the next one. That's the notes. Go to the next one. There you go. Everybody on that page? All right. You start on number four. I'm going to do attendance. And then 
you're going to have a strategy for me. So same thing. Find your endpoints and solve for midpoint. All right, who's got this solved? Who's got the strategy? Who's got, it? Who's got this done? You got something, Nathan? You got nothing. Gab Gabriel, you got something? No. Well, what did I do here? What are my endpoints? G, E. Three and ten. G's right here, so that's three. E is ten. So my midpoint is going to be three plus ten. And I divide by two. I'm taking the average. What's three plus ten? Thirteen. What's thirteen divided by two? Six point five. Yes, sir. My midpoint is six point five. Okay. Now we can do this with a number line. This is what it looks like when we do it for a number line. We can also do this with a Cartesian coordinate system. That's a graph. That's what these next examples are. So I have a point, 2 comma 6, and negative 4 comma 4. Well, we're just going to do the same thing. Only difference is our formula is slightly changed. Our midpoint formula is going to look like this. It's going to be x2 plus x1 divided by 2. And we'll put a comma just like you would in our Cartesian coordinate system, and then y2 plus y1 divided by 2. We're just taking an average of the x's added together and the average of the y's added together. So let's do that. Let's do that. So 2 plus a negative 4 divided by 2. Then negative 6 plus 4 divided by 2. That answer is our midpoint for our Cartesian graph. So 2 plus negative 4 is what? Negative 2. So we get negative 2 divided by 2 again. Well, that was negative 1. Now I have negative 6 plus 4 and divide by 2. Negative 6 plus 4 is what? That's negative 2, 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 is also negative 1. Guys, this is my midpoint between those two Cartesian coordinate points. Negative 1, negative 1. Make sense? So we're just taking the average of the x coordinates added together, and then we take the average of our y coordinates added together. Okay? You start on number six. Look at your notes from number five, and I'm going to put attendance in. I'm going to put the attendance in, and then I'm going to come and check in with you and you give me your strategy. Okay? So you're working on number six right now. Please start. Use the formula I wrote down to get you started, and then just plug in those numbers. Should I write down the equation? Is that, uh, that's a good start, right? So when you write down an equation, guys, that's your strategy. That's your strategy. That's the x. Yes, ma'am. When you write down an equation, that's your strategy for that, that, that problem. So now I have negative 3 plus 4. So that's going to be 1 half. Negative 7 plus 5. Negative 2 over 2. So we can simplify this a little bit. If you guys want to change 1 half to 0.5, you don't have to. I love fractions. I'm going to leave it as 1 half. 
Well, what can I do to negative 2 divided by 2? We did that before. That's negative 1. We just figured out the midpoint between those two Cartesian co coordinate points. All right? These, number 7, number 8, they're the same. Same strategy. Plug in those points, do the math. You're going to get the midpoint. All right? Let's go on to the next one. Let's go on to number nine. Now here we've got our Cartesian coordinate graph. And it's asking us for the midpoint. Well, if they give us a graph, do we have to plug it into the equation? Look how close those points are together. This is another method that you can figure out for midpoint without using that formula. You can do a count, just, just rise over run. We can count boxes here. So how many over is J from F? Two. It's two boxes. How far up is J from F? Four. It's four. So just like average, we got to take half of that distance. We need to take half that distance. So that horizontal, two, when I take half of two, what do I get? I just get one, and then I got to go up. What's half of four? Two. two. Guys, this is my midpoint, and that is the point two comma three. We did that without doing any of the math. All we did was count boxes and cut that distance in half. We cut the horizontal distance, and we cut down that vertical distance. So you can do it that way, too. Now, if you had two points that are really far apart on the Cartesian graph, that would be a little more difficult. But you have that option, too. You can count boxes and then just cut the distance in half if you need to. All right, let's do the next one. This one, I've got a graph like this, and my points are scattered all around the graph. We've got point D and point E that create this segment. These are endpoints on our graph. So they give us the points, and this says, this asks us, find the length of the given segments, and we have to determine if they are congruent. Now. How do I know that two segments are congruent from your notes yesterday? How do I know? You find it? So from your notes, it was the last fill in the blank we did. Two segments of the same uh, measure. Two segments are congruent if they have the same measure. And so when I talk about measure, I'm talking about distance, I'm talking about length. Okay? So to find the lengths of these, I'm gonna have to use that distance formula that we used yesterday. Okay? So let's write that down. Let's write it down. So our distance formula was d equals the square root of x2, x1. That's the horizontal length. Remember, on a number line, we take the endpoints, we subtract them. That's the length of that side. And we square it. Then we add the vertical length, the vertical side of that triangle leg. Whoops, I don't want to add. I don't know what I jumped ahead here. We got to find the, dis the difference for length. And we're going to square that too. All right, so that's my distance formula that we looked at yesterday. So now I just plug these in. Well, point D 
is negative four zero. Point D is negative four zero. So this is my X one, this is my Y one. E, this is my X two, Y two, okay? Those little subscripts just means that's the second coordinate pair, okay? That's all that means, so we don't mix it up. So let's plug this in. So I'm gonna put x2 is zero, and I'm subtracting x1, which is a negative four. Then I'm plugging in y2, which is a negative two, and then I'm subtracting a zero. Okay, and I'm squaring both of them, and then I have to take the square root of all of it. Let's do what's inside the parentheses. So this is zero, subtract a negative four. What happens to that? It does, it becomes positive. So I get, this is four squared. What about a negative two subtract zero? Well, we're subtracting the zero, so a negative zero is still zero, okay? So this is a negative two squared. So now we got four squared plus a negative two squared. So what's four times four? This is 16. And what's negative two times negative two? Careful, that's what, that's what happens when you put in the calculator. When you put negative two squared in the calculator, it, your answer you get is negative four. But a negative two, times a negative two is gonna be a positive four. So this becomes 16 plus four inside the radical sign, which is just the square root of 20. That's the length of DE. Now for segment FG to be congruent to DE, we gotta get the same answer. We gotta get the square root of 20, okay? Let's plug it in. So FG is two comma three. This is my X one, my Y one. G is my X two, Y two. So let's plug that in. The length of DE is square root 20. We know that, we know that. So now we gotta figure out the length of RS. So RS, we gotta plug in to our distance formula. And I'm just gonna plug it in. So R is right here, negative three, negative four. S is two, negative two. So X two is two. I'm gonna subtract a negative three squared. Then I'm adding y2, which is negative 2, and I'm subtracting y1, which is a negative 4. Okay, and I'm squaring that. So 2 subtract a negative 3, what happens there? Turns positive, so this is like 2 plus 3 squared. And then same thing here, negative 2 plus 4 squared. So what do I get? Two plus three. Then I square it. What's five squared? 25. Then I have a negative two and I'm adding four. Negative two plus four. Two, now two squared. So this becomes 25 plus four. So 25 plus four. 29, so is the square root of 29 the same length as the square root of 20? No. no, we do not have congruent segments because their measures are not the same. All right. Ooh, we get some geometry here. We get some geometry here. It says segment EC bisects segment AD. What do you guys remember about bisect? Bisect. Well, if I had a cookie 
I had to share with my sister, we have to split it. I have to, someone's got to bisect it so we can share it in equal halves. So if I have a segment bisecting another segment, what does that mean? This segment is my bisector. And after it makes that connection at point C, what's the result? Well, the result is I have two congruent segments. Bisect. Bisect. You're cutting something in half. All right? So this part, AC, is congruent to CD. So that's our strategy. That's our strategy. This part equals this part. So let's write this in. So I know AC here is 3x plus 6. I know that, I'm sorry, Stephen, I'm, I'm standing in your way so much. CD is 2x plus 14. All right? Certainly. So if we have congruent segments and we know that part AC is equal to CD, guys, that's my strategy. That's my strategy to solve this when I have two equal parts. So now I just plug in what I know. I know CD is 2x plus 14. I know AC is 3x plus 6. That's my equation. That's my strategy. What's my first step to solve that equation? Uh, subtract the 2x from the other side. All right. Let's subtract the 2x from both sides. So I get x plus 6 equals 14. And how we move that 6 is we do the opposite operation. So I'm going to subtract it from both sides. We're adding, and I need to subtract. So I get x equals 8. Is that my answer? Well, that's what x is. They want us to find the measure of AC. So what do I do with that x? Absolutely. You plug it in to that expression, 3x plus 6, because AC equals 3x plus 6. So 3, plug in for x, and add 6. So 3 times 8 is 24, plus 6 is 30. Good, Stephen. Question on that one. So when you see congruent segments, go there. Think about it. That's your strategy. That's one of the strategies you're going to need to remember. Just like we talked about yesterday, part plus part equals whole. Okay? Let's do the next one. Now, there's a numbering issue here. I think it goes from 12 to 15. I think 13 and 14 were just too easy for this class, so we just took them away. They were too easy. So again, We've got the same problem. We've got EC is a bisector. So that AC and CD are congruent segments. They're congruent segments. All right? So, but my information has changed. AC is 3x minus 1. Last time it was 3x plus 6. So my information has changed a little bit. So that part, AC, is 3x minus 1. And then we know what the whole is. AD is 12 minus x. All right? But we don't know. We don't know what CD is. We don't know what this is. 
We know that it's equal to AC. So what do we do? What are we going to do? Find AC. We're going to find AC. We know AC. We know, we know what AC is. Let's write down an equation from yesterday. So remember we wrote down our segments AC plus CD. We know that that equals AD. Remember we have a point that's in between two endpoints. We can add those two segments together. So part plus part equals whole is our strategy here. Well, we know that AC is 3x minus 1. We know that AD is 12 minus x. All right? It's not straightening for me. What do we know about CD? We know it's congruent to AC. We know it's equal to AC. So if AC is 3x minus 1, does that mean that CD is 3x minus 1? Yeah, it does. If they're congruent, I can use the same expression, guys. I can use the same expression. So I'm going to add 3x minus 1 in for CD. And then that's equal to 12 minus x. What's my first step now? I got my equation. I got my strategy written down. What's my first step? My first step is I'm going to combine like terms. C, L, T. Combine like terms. So what can I add together here, Samira? I can add the through two 3x's and I get... So that's 6x. What's the next two things I can combine? Two. So a negative 1 and a negative 1. Well, we're not multiplying, though. We're adding. Careful there. So a negative 1 plus a negative 1 is a negative 2. What's my next step? So we want the x's on one side, and we want the... Plus Constants two. on the other side. So what do you want to do? Plus two. You want to add 2 to both sides? Okay. So I get 6x is equal. Well, let's see. I should probably condense that a little bit. Sorry. This thing is kind of slow today. So 6x equals 14 minus x. So now I got to put the x on the other side by adding. I'm going to add x, add x. So I get 7x equals 14. What's my last step? I'm going to divide by 7. So 14 divided by 7. My x is 2. My x is 2. Is that my answer? No. What do we do with that 2? We're going to plug it in to that equation for CD. CD is 3x minus 1. So 3, well, let's put it over here. 3, plug in 2, minus 1. So 3 times 2 minus 1 is 6. Minus 1 is 5. All right. What time do we got here? We got 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes. I'm not sure if this thing's going to hang with me. Let's do number 16. I don't know why it's kind of crooked there, but it is. So it says here B is between AC. AB equals this, 2x minus, 2x plus 7, 2 plus, 2x plus 1, I'm sorry, I don't know where 7 came from. And then I've got BC is 3x minus 4. Oh, and AC is 62. So let's do a picture here. So I've got a point B 
that's between two endpoints, A and C. A, B, this first part, is 2x plus 4. B, C, the second part, is 3x minus 4. And then the whole is 62. So part plus part equals whole. This is our strategy from yesterday. All right, let's write that down. So 2x plus 1 plus 3x minus 4 equals 62, our whole. So part plus part equals whole. So our first step is CLT. Combine like terms. What do you want to put together? The x's. So the 2x and the 3x. What do we get? So that's 5x. So now I got that taken care of. What's the next thing we want to combine? So the 1 and the negative 4 is going to be negative 3. And that's equal to 62. So now we're solving for x. Nothing more to combine there. We just got to solve for x now. We got to get that move that 3. So we're going to add it. When we add 3 to negative 3, that becomes 0. That's what we want. So I get 5x equals 65. So now I'm dividing by 5. And I get x equals 13. All right. So that's what my x is. So now we have to determine if point B is a bisector. So AB, the length of segment AB, has to be congruent to the length or measure of segment BC for, this to, for B to be a bisector. So we have to take 13 and plug it in to 2x plus 1. So when I do that, 2 times 13 plus 1, what do I get? That's 27, OK? And then I got to plug it in over here. 3 times 13 minus 4. What's 3 times 13? 30, 39. 39 subtract 4. So that's 35. So is 35 equal to 27? No, it's not a bisector. If B was a bisector, those lengths would be the same measure would be congruent, but they're not. They're not. So M is in between points L and N. Our segment LM is equal to 7x minus 1. Right here, this segment. Our segment MN is 2x plus 4. The overall length, Ln, is 12. Is 12. So this is the strategy. Part plus part equals whole. So let's plug it in. So Lm. Lm plus Mn equals Ln. So let's plug that in. So 7x minus 1 plus 2x plus 4 equals 12. So now our first step is combining like terms. So 7x plus 2x is going to be 9x. A negative 1 plus 4 is going to be a plus 3. And that's equal to 12. My next step is I want to move that 3. So to move that, I subtract 3. And so I get 9x equals 9. My last step is I divide by 9, divide by 9, and I get x is equal to 1. All right? So my x is equal to 1. So now i got to plug this in <coughs> to my expressions. So 7 times 1, 
subtract 1. Well, 7 times 1 is 7. Subtract 1, that is 6. That length is 6. Let me do it on this side. 2, I'm plugging in my x is 1, plus 4. So 2 times 1 is 1, or 2, plus 4, that is 6. So does 6 equal to 6? Yes, it does. 6 is equal to 6. So we have congruent segments. Yes. All right, number 22. Number 22. It says that points E, B, and F are collinear. Are they, are they collinear? Why, yes they are, that's true. Why? Well, they're all on line. They're all on the same line. They're all on the same line. Next one are points A. Let me fix that. Points A, B, and C, are they non-coplanar? Well, they're all on plane M, so that is false. They are all on plane M. Now, these are rays. These next ones are rays. So we have a ray BF. Let me highlight that. So B, my ray here is BF. It's going in this direction. And then the other one I have is ray BE. You see how there's only one arrowhead here? Let me rewrite it here. So B E is written with that. So B is that is my endpoint. BF is written like this. So my endpoint has got no arrowhead above it. But let me point in that direction. BE is going in this direction. Well, opposite rays, they are definitely rays. Opposite rays go in opposite directions. Yes, well, this is true. Now, the next one I have, the question is, are point F and B non-collinear? Well, here's point F, here's point B, and they're on the same line there, so that is false. And then 26 is saying there's exactly one plane through F, B, E. Let's see this. So here's my F, here's my B, and here's my E. Well, that is a line. Now let's think about this. I have, I can draw a plane here like this, and I can say that that goes through that line. Well, I can draw another plane here at a slight angle going through that line and it goes down here and then we got a little dotted line behind this and I could still draw another one back over here I could draw another plane through that line okay so I could keep going here in fact I could go and draw an infinite amount of planes through that line E B, F. Okay? So this is false because I can draw I can draw more than one. And if you can draw more than one, that's your counterexample. And we'll talk about counterexamples when we in a couple weeks. Last one, the intersection of plane M and F E F E is B. Well, yes, it's it's point B. You guys see that point B, this is FE is going through that plane. And the result is point 
B. So that's true. That is true. All right. You guys finish up the homework for tonight um, and do the lesson online up tonight at home and then come to class tomorrow with all your questions to ask anything you're struggling with because we're going to do the practice and we're going to keep moving. Try to catch up. For those of you that are still behind, try to catch up by Friday, which is tomorrow. Um, if not, give me an email. We got to talk. We got to schedule some time either on Zoom or somehow to get uh, everyone caught up and on the same on this at the same place. Okay, this is Mr. Bloom with Paytel High School.